My name is Mark Douglas. I trade as the Crazy Baker Limited. So welcome to Amazing Food and Drink. Today we're with Mark Douglas, the Crazy Baker Limited. And Mark's going to tell us his journey in the baking industry and a wee bit about his background. So firstly, Mark, welcome along to Amazing Food and Drink. Oh, thank you for having me. Good man. And I want you to tell us a wee bit about yourself, your background and your yeah. company. Well, I am... Um 52 and 3 quarters. You're looking well for it, Mark. <laughs> that bacon's working well, I'll tell you. It's the L'Oreal. <laughs> I've been baking from the age of 16. Okay. Left school with really not much uh, opportunity. So at that particular time, I had an uncle who was involved in a bakery. So I was shoveled out the door one September morning <laughs> up to Mora. And that started my apprenticeship, as it was then. And you had to serve five years. So that was my pathway to the baking trade. Brilliant. And did you work for that company for a long time? or Worked how... work for, as he as he is and still is, Uncle Andy. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> like a TV programme? Oh, absolutely. So I worked with Andy for six, six, seven years. And then moved on to various bakeries within, mostly around Lisburn at the time, you know. So that helps you sort of to widen your, your skill and various recipes and mixes. Brilliant. So what inspired you to start your own outside? Baking well, company. That's a good question. What inspired me to be what I do now, which is baking on site, and that entails bringing two gas hot plates. Mm -hmm. They're from the 1950s, and of that era, they, they do they can be quite portable because the the cast iron top lifts off them. So what brought me to do that was within the baking industry, they had the influx, if you like, of the premix. Mm -hmm. Certainly within that sort of idea. You've certainly seen the skill being diminished and certainly all the things that you were taught from the age of 16 that all of a sudden weren't being used anymore. So I used to take city breaks around Europe, around springtime all the time. And I remember standing in the Grand Market Hall in Budapest and it was minus 10. Oh my God. And this fantastic marketplace, it's one of the places if you've ever been in Budapest you have to go to. It's like three floors on it. Looking around thinking there was everything under the sun, there was fish swimming in a tank and the works and I thought to myself, there's everything in a marketplace bar somebody making bread. And I thought, well, there's a wee bit of a food for thought if you like. Pardon the pun? Ah, absolutely. <laughs> so back home in the bakery and the first thing I had to do that morning was I let the hot plate and it was like, presto, there it is. It's about the only bread you could probably make on site in terms of the time it takes from from doing it up to baking it, you can probably turn it around in 15, 20 minutes. Brilliant. If you're efficient in that, in that particular skill. So sort of went about that thought and probably held that thought for two years in the good Northern Ireland fashion, didn't do much about it, you know. <laughs> but that was the, the thought was set, the intention was set and that's... That was your inspiration? That was the inspiration. So put a pass, very Budapest, good. Budapest, yeah. And tell me then, so now that you're actually doing it, uh, what's it like running your bakery on a day-to-day -day basis? It's, it's, it's only me, it's only small, but it's like seven days a week, you know, you, you never switch off. See, that's the thing, some yeah. people talk about running their own business for the freedom, mm -hmm. and you're actually worse off than you would have been working yeah, for a bakery. you're never away from it. I know I'm here doing this today, and it, it worked well, because I had to go to Andrew's flour mill to, to lift flour. So I was like, well, it'll work today, and Just down two, the road three words of one stone, so I'll get some flour. Yeah, so, it's intense, you know, it's outside work, it's... Uh, it's a challenge with the elements, especially over, over the winter. Mm -hmm. But it's rewarding as well because you're choosing to do something that you want to do. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it, has, it has its own rewards. Your own boss? Your own boss. I probably, um, that's probably the worst thing of the whole <laughs> lot because depending on what sort of attitude you have, if you're very self-motivated and quite particular in what you do, then you're quite critical of, your, of, of yourself. Of yourself, yeah. yeah. So, so what is then on that basis? What's your biggest struggle? Biggest struggle? Probably not so much now, but at the, at the start, going back to the beginning, the biggest struggle was, where can you do it? Okay. So I had applied to St George's Market, I don't know many times, and the answer was no. And then... And why was that? Don't know. Don't know. You know... Was there already bakers in there, maybe? No, there no? wasn't. No. You know, I was actually told at the time, in no uncertain words, they had no need for the like of that. So I thought to myself, well... And that then was the biggest struggle. I had wrote off the shows, got no answer. But I think maybe people thought you weren't wise in the head, certainly within the <laughs> bacon trade at the time. Obviously, I was still employed yeah. at the time. You know, I sort of said, I had this idea, and they sort of laughed at me. 
St but George's Market, are you listening? <laughs> but I thought, you know what, I am going to try this and there's not one person in this earth going to stop me. Good man. I had to find out, you just had this burning desire, burning, uh, desire. you know, this is, I'm going to try this no matter what. So at that particular time, I was practicing yoga in Devis Street. Very good. In Conway Mill. My sister had a Beckham yoga studio. So at that time they were starting a small market and I thought, well, I can't get anywhere. A small market start was a Saturday morning. I thought, go for it. I have to. You know, if you you can talk and talk about, I want to do this, I want to bake on site. But when the opportunity comes up, no matter where it is, you've got to try it. So I had a small three foot hot plate up to a, a portable gas cylinder. So it was a small market. Didn't see a massive crowd, but it, it, it sort of led me to believe from the crowd that was there, there was distance there was in something this. something in it. Uh, yep. So it's done it for. For three months, and then I go to all the classy places. Like, <laughs> so somebody says to me after that, the next place you need to go to is the car boot sale on the Crumlin Road. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> so that was the next step. So then, just by chance, I came across a guy, and he says to me, "I have a an old four foot hot plate. The one I was using was three foot. He says it needs work, but you're welcome to come and get it. Went and got it." Took it to a gas commercial gas fitter in Uri. So they gas safed it and then had to register with the council, get a gas safe certificate, your hygiene certificate, Very good. all that. So then the next thing became that meant they had seven feet of hot plate. I had the four foot one was just being fixed, I had the three foot one, that gave me seven foot. So the next thing was you're outside, I've got no shelter. So you think, well, what do you do? And my mate says to me, He's a bit of a handyman type thing, <laughs> jack of all trades, Connor he called him. He says I'll build you a market stall. So I went and bought... So like a gazebo type thing? <laughs> well, yeah. no, it wasn't there. That, was, that should have been the simple answer. <laughs> you think when you get in your late 40s you should know them things. But he says to me, we'll go and get a load of box sacks and steel and we'll build a market stall. So that's what I did. I went out to the steel company and built a 12 foot market stall. Very good. One of them tarpaulins threw over it and the way we went. <laughs> And where, how did you transport that then? How did you move it? I had the bear van then. Oh. <laughs> He's causing you money here. The bear van. So that was the chance. That was left, then left the Conway Mill. I sort of thought, well, I can't do, I'm already working six days a week. Yeah. Can't do two. I thought, well, it's a Sunday morning at the boot sale. Give it a go. So it turned up. And from the minute we let the half plate and turned the first sodas, gone. They were just, couldn't Flying keep, off the couldn't, shelves. Couldn't keep up with it. Seriously? Honestly, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely so brilliant. that went on for a number of months, and then there was this guy shouted at me out of the blue, <laughs> as I know, we call him John, and he was from Warren Point. He says, hey boy, I have one of them four foot hot plates, would you like it? And I, I thought, my God, are you joking me? <laughs> so I went up to see John and Warren Point, and it was it was tied up to a gas cylinder in a cold shed with 14 lawnmowers stacked to the roof. <laughs> so I bought the half plate off John. You had a bit of work to get it. Yeah, got it gas safed up like the last one, and then that gave me eight foot of half plate, and I still have them to this day. And you're still using them, they're still, still going? Still, same thing, still Hope going. Hope he's getting yeah. free sodas, is he? Aye, he was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, you, you talk about your struggles there. What's the best bits? The best bits is getting that response from the customer base, where they want to come and buy off you every week. You know, you can have all the awards in the world, but if you don't have a regular customer base who want to come, come and buy off you, that has to be the rewards because that has to be your living. Yeah. So without that, there is so no... Seeing people coming yeah, back you, is, is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, and you can't... That, there would be no crazy baker. You know, that's what feeds me, and that's 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 my job, and that's what I do. So I that's Pretty the best reward. So the, the return customers return is... Return customer, it has to be for any business, you know. If you've no return, return customer, you've nothing. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you've actually led me on to my next question there mm -hmm. really well. Mm -hmm. Awards, you've won a few? Yeah, I won four Great Taste Awards from 2014, and then consecutive years after that. didn't enter last year, I was just run off my feet and just didn't have the time to do it. That's actually good, too busy is a good complaint. Yeah, indeed. So, sort of leading on from the car boot sale, I always had this one thought. I used to work in June's Cake Shop, which was on the Lisburn Road. Okay. And I used to think, why don't they have a stand at Balmoral Show? So, the burning desire was there, was already set there from that previous job. I would like to bake at Balmoral Show, on site. Is this when it was at Balmoral? No, it had just moved, moved out to, to the Mace, I think oh, yeah. it was 2014. So I contacted Food N I. I'd done a Google search, Balmoral Show, yeah. bake, at, bake at Balmoral Show. 
and up came, up came food in and I thought, I'll give them boys a bell and see if the crack is. So, emailed them, got a response back, met up with who and I know to be Michelle Sherlock, mm -hmm. told her what I was doing, would like to bake a Balmoral show, and baked a Balmoral show May 2014, and that was the first one, and I've baked every year at it since. And how did it go for you? Flat out, lit the hot <laughs> plates, and it was just incredible, I couldn't believe it. I was still doing a full time job at this time, had to get the days off oh work, which wasn't easy. So, yeah, flat out. And then moving on from that, still doing two jobs, doing shows. I started to get into shows like agricultural shows like Castle Well, Clogger Valley, so on and so forth. So, still doing two shows and seeing the end of that year, I was thinking, I'm exhausted, I'm wrecked. So, but still, back to the biggest struggle was getting a regular spot. Mm -hmm. So just out of the blue on the radio one day I heard Folktown Market. I thought, what's the score with that? So back to the the old faithful Google, went home and Googled it. And Folktown Market were proposing to launch a market in Bank Square. I think that was twenty In the town here? In the town, yeah, I think yeah. that was twenty sixteen. So long story short, got a regular spot at the launch and I thought to myself, Well, this is it. <laughs> I was almost at the point of quitting, was exhausted, there was nowhere to do it permanent, I thought, I can't keep this up. So I thought, you know what, that's it, I'm a notice in, got a regular pitch at Folktown, and it wasn't a second thought, I thought I'm going for it, end of story. Good man, gonna you're a, a true entrepreneur. <laughs> going to be a market trader. <laughs> so this time I bought a pop-up gazebo, you put it up in like two minutes, so yeah, folk started at Folktown, I think Folktown was launched about April time. So yeah, that was me full time, every Thursday in Bank Square along with the summer shows that well, sort of once you're out there in that playing field full time you then you get to hear of other ones yeah exactly yeah. and it freed up other time you know and then you, you weren't restricted to your six your six day a week job you're able to do other things and get the other shows which created a living from brilliant yeah. absolutely brilliant so what's the secret to running a, a five star bakery oh, a five star bakery <laughs> i don't know about a five star oh you have loads of you awards know, as, as it's come known as the big blue tent you know but Within that big blue tent, it takes a lot of skill to do what you're doing, you know, you just can't say, oh, he bakes in a tent, but it's all the preparation. Mm -hmm. It takes the thought process to get you there, what you're going to need. You're bringing basically the beating heart of a home bakery in the back of a van, getting to the market, getting on site, setting it up in a safe way. They're able to project that and bake everything and serve it straight off the hot plate. Yeah, so it... Takes a bit of skill and thought. Takes a bit of skill, really? a bit of yeah. thought process, and it's not the first time you go to you turn up at a market and think, "Oh, I forgot my mixing bowl." You know that way. <laughs> so, yeah, it takes. Uh, Good man. Yeah. You have you, plenty to do before you get there. I'm sure. Yeah, it's a day's work before you get to a market. Yeah. You know, you think you go to a market, say Newton Orange, just my regular pitch in Conway Square on a Saturday morning. So, I bake stuff the day before, like sourdoughs and so on. So it's a full day in preparation before we get there, and we're on site in Newton Orange from quarter past four on a Saturday morning. Oh, early start. Yeah, so time, and what time's it finish? Market time you get set up, get the hot plate slit. The first sodas hit the hot plate probably just before six a.m. Market runs on till about three, half three. So time you pack up. It's a and long go. day. Yeah, and time you get home and washed up. It's gonna be seven. You be ready for your bed. Collapse time. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Mark, is provenance, sustainability, you know, organic produce is that important to you and your business? Provenance certainly is, you know, because everything I use within everything that's possible to buy within region, within the region, you buy it. Uh, buttermilk is Bolly Rasheen. It's distributed by Drains Farm in Lisburn. Very so good. that's where that comes from. It's very local to where you yeah, are then. Absolutely. Yeah. So all the flour is from Andrews Mills. I was just there picking the load up, as I say. So it's all milled here in Belfast. Very good. The cheese is Dramona. The butter is local. So yeah, anything that I can get local. You'd have to say 99% of the ingredients I use are all local. Magic. And obviously you're supporting other businesses the way people are supporting of yourself. Course. Well, that's what it's all about. That's a problem that it's about. It's not yeah. just you buying your stuff, but then it's, it's passing on, you know, can can you sell me something? And that's what the sustainability yeah, element comes yeah, into. Exactly. Brilliant. Yeah. And tell me, has tourism had an impact on your business, Mark? Tour tourism, you would have to say yes. And if you take, for example... The year of food and drink, which was 2016, mm -hmm. uh, I was asked by the Northern Ireland Tourist Board to go to London in Soho, Soho, okay. to, they were doing their media launch in the Institute of the, the Institute of Good Housekeeping, which is in Soho, 
So I was asked along with, I think Niall McKenna was there, and Derek Cray, there's a couple of others there as well. So I was doing the bread demonstration to all the sort of media and food bloggers from the London area. Okay. So that put you out there on awareness saying people sort of have a, a notion who you are. So that was a brand de demonstration for that. In 2016, in the year of food and drink, Food and I had sent up countless journalists from around the world, as far away as New Zealand, Malaysia. Chef Juan came from Malaysia, Brilliant. and I did a food demonstration for him in terms of soda bread and material. All very traditional stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So yes, in terms of tourism, in terms of the media and the awareness that it created of me, yeah, you'd have to say yes. How much trade then came after that on a local basis is always hard to yeah, the legacy is more difficult to yeah, measure. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to measure that. Yeah. Okay, but you did create a good bit of awareness there, obviously. Absolutely, yeah. And at times that can be quite sort of priceless in a sense, you know. Brilliant. Yeah. What's the future for bacon here in Ireland? Oh, that's a long... Big debate. question. Oh, it's a big, <laughs> big question. Could be a very sort of long, drawn-out debate, depending on who would be in it. Uh, I think at the minute, it's all about... I would say it as a, as a skills factor. You know, I don't think it's going to be something that's... If you take the premix culture, mm -hmm. that's creating a lack of skill. It's creating a lack of apprenticeship. It's creating a lack of, you probably want to say, sus sustainability mm -hmm. in terms of the home bakeries. Because if you don't have the manpower, how are you going to keep the bakeries going when that current staff gets to an age they're not doing it no more. Yeah. You know, so like so, to yourself, I'm yeah, not being cheeky. Exactly. So artisan producers like you, yeah. do, do you think we'll see the end of them? Or, 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 or? Oh, will you see the end of them? Hopefully not, by the way. That is a good question. I think time's going to tell that. But for me, it's back to the scale again. If you don't pass on the scale, then you will see the end of anything, whether mm -hmm. that be the chefing world, a joiner or a yeah. plumber or a tailor, anything that has a hand skill or a skill that's uh, needed to be passed on to the next generation. That's where, for me, I had, that's where the thought came from, for me starting baking classes. And if you don't pass, I have this phrase, you know, learn it, pass it on, keep the, keep the tradition alive. Mm -hmm. It's all about transferring that knowledge. If you don't transfer that knowledge in baking or in chefing or whatever skill, it then it's will gone. die. Yeah. And that leads me on to my next question, just mentioned there. Have you any plans? What's your future plans for, for the Crazy Baking Company? The future plans on the current dry uh, are and is baking classes. Mm -hmm. So the reason for that is when you're at a marketplace, you hear everything firsthand over the counter, whether it's good or bad, you know, there's nothing held back. It just must be because you're on the street. It's different in a shop scenario, people are a wee bit more reserved. Yeah. At a marketplace it's just shoot you straight from the hip. <laughs> you know, I hear all the, hear all the stories. No holds barred. No holds barred. You know, so so you hear about tales of you know my granny used to make that. That reminds me. That smell reminds me of yeah, nostalgia. Granny. Yeah, it's all that nostalgia. But then when you build that picture up, it's all about it reminds me of. So in a sense, nobody was doing it no more at home. Mm -hmm. So you had seen that generation gap. Say for like my mother, we were brought up on it. You know, my mother baked three days a week. Home baking, same home here. Baking, yeah. yeah. So if you take sort of a part, obviously it's my trade, but if you take that generation where we have become the two-parent working family, mm -hmm. you know, so would my wife bake? Would her friends bake? No. no. So you have that huge vacuum. So if you take that vacuum, are they going to pass it on to their children? And the answer is no. So there you have that vacuum and that skill that has just been lost. Disappeared. Yeah. So that gave me the thought, well, be shame to see that all lost at home, you know, because there's so many memories and nostalgia built into that. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm gonna start baking classes. Brilliant. So I've started them. Had a bit of an interruption due to circumstances. So this year, renewed bigger, and at the minute I'm booked out until September. Brilliant. So there is there's definitely an interest there. There's an interest there, yes. But then feeding off that interest, what you hear over the counter, mm -hmm. but with that as well, because I'm doing it out in front of people. You know, I bring the buttermilk, I bring the flour, I mix everything, I wet, it, I cut it, I pin it, I roll it, it's on the hot plate. Then they can relate to what I'm doing. When I go to advertise a baking class, they go, there's your man who does the market. I've seen him at Balmore. Very show. good, yeah. You know, so it's that instant rec recognition, you know. So, yeah, there's an interest there. And for me, it's about passing that. If you only pass that, if you take a class of six, if you only pass that skill on to one person who wants to do it at home, mm -hmm. that's a success, you know. They're going to pass it on to somebody else, yeah. 
certainly it's also about building your business as well. But for me, it's about the heritage of the skill. Yeah. Like, like I it's was It's not taught. just about the business. No, it's yeah. not just about, it's about keeping the skill alive. And, and we had talked earlier about um, maybe scaling that. Bring yeah. it to the masses. Yeah, bring it to the masses. It's, this is where you bring in people like yourself. My son, who's 20, Brandon, has said to me, you know, you could do on, online classes. And I'm thinking, oh, I get on. <laughs> <laughs> but then that's... It's the future. Is, it's it the is. Future, I, you know, you're so right. But this is where, you know, when you're of a generation, you're not that digitally minded. Yeah. You then got to listen to people. Who are. And your you, son's probably... Uh, exactly. That and that generation, that generation that they're, more, they're more wired into it. So yeah. you've got to say... Well, do you know what? If that's what it's going to be, then we'll give it a we'll give it a go. So what's that space? <laughs> so with that, he on my Facebook page, he had done a couple of uh, short videos leading up to the making of short cross pastry. Then went on to peeling and stewing the apples off, or my Bramleys. Then we had the finished item and baking it. So it was a you know a build up to the one item that was being made. An apple tart may be quite simple. Maybe quite simple to a baker baking it at home. Yeah. But to someone who has never done that before, you know, you've got to put it's yourself. Like a whole new yeah, world. so you've got to put yourself in that position. You're showing this to somebody who has never done anything like this before. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about passing that on and making that awareness. You're you're doing my job for me because I was going to say to you, where can we find you? You mentioned Facebook. I'll put all the links underneath the video. Yep. Tell me where we can find you, Mark. I'm on Twitter at. Twitter at Crazy Baker, K R A Z A. Good man. But I'm on Instagram at Crazy Baker N A. And I'm on Facebook as Crazy Baker. And have you got a website? I have a website. I'm going to have to admit that I'm not really keeping it up to date, but with the renewed classes, I have to look at things more progressively and start to keep that up to date. And we're trying to build in on that say trend to. We're going we're to going build to. in. Good man. Build in a booking system facility. For, the for your classes. classes, yeah. So currently, the classes are all about soda bread, potato bread, yeah, which is the key skills in Northern Ireland for on our traditional breads. You mm -hmm. know, it's the key parts for your Ulster fry. So you've provenance in, in in the items, and certainly within the dish. Also, we're doing currently scones. Also, people love to do scones, and as an introduction to yeast bread, we're doing a focaccia. Lovely. So when you do a three-hour class, you've got a because I want to sort of transfer. Another skill, which is a yeast bread skill, you know, it's totally different from, from soda, for example. Mm -hmm. You need to take a class to understand that. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I may well come. So My with, tummy's rumbling yeah. there, just letting you know. <laughs> so within a three-hour class, you've got to try and find yourself a bread that's going to turn around within three hours. Focaccia works really well. And it is, it, is, it tastes, tastes really good. So with that, and also you've got to find something that interests people also. So it works well within the three hours and people love it. But the key factor there is within the transferring you to a yeast bread, the technique for that yeast bread production mm -hmm. will transfer to other yeast breads. So, it's so you, you can take it across many other exactly. breads? Exactly, yeah. So that's the key. It's the technique and the process needed to make that, which will carry on the other items. Super. You're going to be very busy, Mark. Yeah, I'm very right. busy. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, tell me. What advice would you give to anyone who, who's thinking about getting into the baking trade, particularly if they're going to do something artisan like yourself? Well, if you're going to go into the baking trade, you, can, you need to sort of prepare yourself for early hours. You've got to prepare yourself probably for a six-day working week. But with, beyond that, it's about, I think you have to have a love for it. You know, you, there's no point in saying you're going to go for it and try it. I think trying it will be good. Then probably that's going to expose your love or your or not for it, you know, but you got to be self-motivated. Mm -hmm. Again, you've got to try and find an interest and think to yourself, how could I then maybe progress within this trade? You know, could it be cake decorating, for example? There's other avenues within the bacon trade as, as opposed to just bacon. Self-motivation is going to be a huge thing. Massive. Yeah. That's, that's Especially for, for bakers. And I'm going to give the bakery yeah. I go to a, a plug here. Tommy Patton and Greencastle. <laughs> Brilliant. Six days a week. I see him. He's there from morning to night. And that's yeah. a... It's a real hours. tough game to be yeah, at. It's long hours. But so rewarding, yeah. as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, listen, that was absolutely fantastic, Mark. And I really Thank wish you. you all the best. And what you're doing uh, and keeping the traditions going is amazing. Yeah. I really mean that. So... Thank you very much for watching. And the Crazy Baker, Newton Arts Market, where else? Newton Mark? Arts Market every Saturday. We do Cumber Market the first Thursday in the month. On the other Thursdays, we are at Carrie Fergus. Catches up probably Balmoral Show this year for sure. 
We've just been to Borough Market, by the way, in London. Very good. A fortnight ago. So. And are you available for like private functions? Well, yes, funny. Mr. Waker Waffles, he had mentioned that. Ah. You know? So we had Michael does a lot of private functions. Yes, Michael and stuff, Henderson. Yeah. So Michael, Michael, that's sort of Michael's feel. So when you talk to people like Michael, you know, you sort of think to yourself, well, he certainly had said to me, it's about you could maybe transfer yourself into that field. But then back to the one man show, it's about time. Yeah, how, how, yeah, how busy right, you are at exactly, the time. Exactly, how you manage that, yeah. Well, honest to God, that was absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I hope everybody's enjoyed that. And you see where Mark's available underneath in the links. And hopefully we'll come to a market near you soon. So thanks again for watching. Mm -hmm.